And honestly, what do you need to do to maybe see some improvement? Now, you might realize that half those numbers are spot on. You might realize that only two or three of them are off. Some of you might realize like all seven of them are way off. And so if that is the case, by the way, don't overwhelm yourself, but try and think of what are the ones that are going to influence the biggest result. And my advice to you, focus on the top of the funnel versus the bottom of the funnel. Just like you train reps to focus on like the phone and recommendations because ultimately if they're better at uh, getting appointments set up and getting referrals from people, they're going to get a lot more appointments done and they're going to sell a lot more than the, per the person who has a 90% closing percentage and a $300 average order size but who only can do like three appointments a week because he's out of people to call. You want to focus on the top of the funnel, which is recruiting. So I'd be looking at touches, creating touches. I'd be looking at your cap percentage, your acceptance percentage, and your show to day one and your launch percentage. Those are the things I would look at first and foremost before I even started thinking about productivity, personally. Um, too many managers try and get really good at productivity before they get really good at recruiting. And the reality is you need to get really good at recruiting first before you focus on the productivity. And then when you can couple those two things together, that's when you have a powerhouse office. Number three is work with your people. You know, you have to work with people a little bit differently during the fall and the spring than you do in the summertime. And for me, like if I have a rep who's doing four to eight appointments a week, that is totally fine with me. I'm totally okay with them doing five, six appointments a week. Because if you think about it, honestly, if you only have 15 people on your team, but they were all doing six appointments a week, you'd be killing it right now. You'd be killing it. You'd be destroying every other manager right now. And if you've got 40 people on your team that were all doing six appointments a week, you would be top five in the nation. I'm, I'm confident in that statement. So I have a lot of my people on my team who I know only maybe do appointments three days out of the week, and we know this because we do a transition PC with everyone after their fast start, and we make a schedule for them. And for many of them, it's two, three days a week they're focusing on doing appointments. And I'm totally fine if they're doing appointments on... I think I might have lost you guys there for a little bit. So if I did, I apologize. My battery just died. Just had to charge, plug my uh, computer back in. So hopefully I didn't lose you. And... If I did, I'm going to be really upset and really frustrated, but hopefully that's not the case. Anyways, just help your people hit their goal. You know, and, I, and I, whether that's six appointments, whether that's 12 or 15 appointments. I have about three people on my team that I talk to about doing 12 to 15 appointments a week. I have three total. One is a CSP, one is sold over 100,000, and one is my number one rep for the year so far outside of my CSP. And... And, and he focuses on doing like 15 appointments a week, but that is via him really wanting to work hard, wanting to make a lot of money, and he's really motivated. But for the most part, most of the people on my team that I work with, even my key staff, it's like five to eight appointments a week typically, I'd say is about 80% of what they actually are committed to hitting. And something we talk about a lot is make commitments with care but honor them with your integrity. Make sure your word means something. So in key staff every week, when they give me their commitment, they tell me how many appointments they're committed to. And I, I tell them, I don't want the number. That would be really awesome if this happened. I want to know for sure what's going to take place this week. As a manager, what can I count on from you? And I would like to know what your CPO goal is. And I, I let them know. I say, you know, you guys, I understand that CPO can fluctuate the demo number is the one thing we have complete control over. So what is the number you're committed to hitting by next Monday, no matter what? And I have all of them go around and they give me their commitment for what they're shooting for. And we do this with people on PDI too. You know, just a question that we'll ask them typically on like Tuesday or Wednesday is, hey, by the way, you know, what can we count on you for this week? In terms of by Monday, how many appointments realistically can we count on you completing? Like, what are you shooting for, but also what are you committed to? And based on that number, we put it in Web PDI, and we just help them follow through on that number. So on Friday, if they told me they were committed to five, but they've only done two, I just remind them, I say, by the way, you know, you, your commitment is five appointments. I just want to make sure, can I count on you on completing at least those three appointments by Monday night? And they almost always will say yes, and almost always they will strive really hard to actually hit that number because 
it's just constantly holding them accountable. So that's another thing is use Web PDI. If you're not using Web PDI, I feel like you're missing a lot of CPO. Now you might have a great Excel file that you type all their daily notes in, weekly notes, long-term notes, and you have a really excellent program that creates great productivity. And if you do, great. Kudos to you. I feel like a lot of managers don't, and a lot of managers uh, just get reports and then forget about it. And I love being able to t put in exactly what's going on with this rep this week, specifically what are the days they're focusing on, what are the days they're not calling, so I'm not calling them on their days off, annoying them, but I'm actually holding them accountable to the schedule they told me they were going to do. Now, by the way, if someone tells me they're doing two on Wednesday, and I talk to them on Wednesday morning, and they've only got one, I always bring that up. It's never, it's, so they tell me they have one for the day. I'm like, hey, by the way, now you, you told me your goal was two. Is that accurate? And they say, yes. I say, were you serious about wanting to have two today? Yeah. Are you still serious about it? Yeah. Well, are you, I guess, when are you planning on making your phone calls? Realistically, try and get the second one lined up for today. And a lot of times they're like, oh, I'm going to do it around like 11 or so. Well, is there a reason you're waiting till 11 to make those phone calls? Uh, well, yeah, I was just going to get shower and eat some breakfast and stuff like that. It's like, well, just so you know, can I, can, I give you a, can I give you a tip? Yeah, that's fine. It's like, if you wait till 11, the chances of you getting an appointment for today at 11 are going to be a lot less likely. And you're a lot less likely to probably get a hold of a lot of people before they leave for the day. And so to get one more realistically, you probably take three, four, maybe five phone calls. Do you think you could call like three or four people in the next 20 minutes? It's 8.30 right now. And then just give me a call back by 9.15 so I can give you an accurate report to Aaron Love for you. Yeah, I can do that. Awesome. Cool. Well, here. Why don't you just try and see if we can at least get that second one lined up so I can give an accurate report for you. And I'll talk to you in a little bit. And that's happens on probably 50% of my phone calls with everyone. And we do a lot of same day demo driving, but it's ultimately to get them to hit the goal that they told me they wanted to hit. It's never, I think you should do this. It's, are you, were you serious about that when you made that commitment? Yeah. Are you still serious about it? Yeah. Do you really want to have it? Yeah. Well, what's your plan? And if their plan needs an adjustment, based off of what I think would realistically maybe improve that, I definitely make sure I share that with them, but it's always, you know, what are your thoughts? After I share with it, do you think that's something you could do? Yeah. And once I get to the point of doing that type of a conversation with someone for a week or two, it really gets to the point where they're managing themselves, and I'm no longer giving those kinds of suggestions. Like my key staff tells me they're hopping on the phone right now. I'm probably going to call you back in like 30 minutes and let you know, or I'll just shoot you a text and let you know. And so we, we create a lot of demos just through our PDI, and that's really ultimately the purpose of PDI is to drive demos. So uh, it also helps retain your people. Another thing is make sure anyone that you want to be working with long-term, long-term being longer than a month, make sure they're on your key staff and make sure you're having conversations with them about key staff and what it would take for them to be on key staff with you. And just sometimes a little simple conversation, be like, hey, just so you know, I know that last week did not quite go the way that you wanted, but you're one of about three people on the team that I'm really considering for key staff right now. And the only thing that it's really, the only thing that I think you'd have to work on I mean, your attitude is incredible. That's one of the reasons, that's really the main reason I want you on key staff because I love working with you as a person and you just are the type of person that I think would be a great person to have on our key staff. The biggest thing is just sales consistency. And I'm not looking for a ton. I know you got school right now and you're going to school full time or you've got that other job right now that you're working around. If you could just be turning in at least like two or three orders a week, you know, like 500 to 750 a week, that's all it takes. So you said you're committed to six this week? That should be it. You should be well in that. You know, you should be able to hit that easily. And so let me just see that you can do that for a couple weeks in a row. And you're definitely going to be on our key staff. And like planting the seeds for what you're looking for uh, for a key staff person, which is just consistency. Two to three orders a week consistently. That's 
and that's what it is. My key staff, if you look at it, I had 15 people on my key staff. They did 9,000 last week, and they did about 70 of my 130 demos. So my key staff really is a large, large percentage of what our office is doing right now. And so d developing a key staff program, and even if you don't have people that you feel are key staff quality, you should make them key staff quality. Just invite them in. You know, a lot of time I invite people in for a key staff meeting just because I like them and I want them to get the information. And it's like if you, if you can expose more people to more quality information that you would probably be going over in a key staff meeting, are they going to sell more cutco? Probably. So you should expose more people to that information and not make it this exclusive thing that most people don't even hold out long enough to be able to get to. Get them in the groove earlier and they will stick around longer and they will become a better rep by it. So I'm a big advocate of the key staff program and running it every single week. And make sure that you're working hard to retain your people. And just two things on this is say thank you once a week on PDI. Make sure you genuinely thank them for being on your team and how much you love working with them and how much you appreciate the effort that they've been putting in and you appreciate them overcoming some of the challenges that they've been going through. Whatever it is that they need to be thanked for, make sure you're thanking them once a week. Make At least do it once a week with every person on your team. Uh, that, that alone, by the way, will probably double your retention just by making sure your people feel appreciated. Mm -hmm. And then celebrate little victories with them. You know, that person who maybe had two no-sales but was struggling with referrals and got 12 names yesterday, celebrating with them and talking about what that's going to do for them and really celebrating those victories with them one day at a time. And then the fourth thing, and I'm just going to be really quick on this, is study training because uh, this is one of the things that has helped me tremendously this year we're having our best productivity we've ever had before uh, and I don't have the time to explain all the things that we're doing but I will say um, the three things that I think are valuable is watch Drew Frank's uh, training a couple videos not you don't have to watch the whole thing but there are day two part one and two and then also watch his training appointment section on day two as well where he teaches HM3s and focuses on seeing the best five customers that they have their first weekend. Really valuable sections to watch. So day two, part one and two, and then also the training appointment section, which unfortunately I don't know the video number for that, but somewhere in the middle of day two or towards the end. The other thing I would recommend is listen to the boss recorded calls that are on the box website. The boss calls are absolutely amazing. I think every manager should be listening to them and they will take you to the next level. One that I highly recommend is one by Peter Vogt called Executive Thinking and Mental Toughness. Phenomenal video, or not really video, phenomenal audio. I would also listen to Drew Frank's metric system. I would listen to Andrew Smallwood. It's called Growth. Amazing, amazing audio file. And also I would listen to uh, Purpose Driven Recruiting by Trent. It's awesome. So that would be what I would focus on. And then I would just make sure that you're uh, learning to teach the like list effectively on day three. I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of reps don't sell is they don't know how to make like lists. They make a like list for one customer that's like 600 bucks because it's got 10 items on it. And you know, they're like, yeah, so this is going to be 680 but we could even do it on five payments if you want. I could show you what that would look like. And the customer's like, yeah, no, I'm okay. Or the rep's like, oh, here, we can do it on five payments. Let me show you what that looks like. And they sit there for 20 seconds trying to figure out what it would be on a five pay. And the customer's thinking about $600 for 20 seconds. And they just say, yeah, I don't think so. And the rep says, okay, cool. Well, did you guys want me to show you what it'd be for maybe even only a few of these pieces, maybe? Yeah, I don't think so. And they leave. They make one like list. I would, I would challenge you to ask every person in training to bring their notepad that they wrote all their like lists in to advanced training one or into their transition PC and just look at it. It will make you barf all over your desk if you actually do this. And you'll realize, by the way, by doing this, what your people don't understand. And this is actually a really good exercise is have them show you their like list and you'll notice what they're doing that's confusing customers. You'll notice things like, one, they don't write down payments. Two, uh, 